moment of the entire championship, the debut of Leroy Poulter behind the wheel of the second factory Castrol Toyota Aurus. As it is his first ever start in S2000, Poulter is the last of the S2000 machines to take on stage one. With 11 seconds lost, it was a slow start for Poulter and Robert Paisley. Oh, terrible, eh? just made uh, too many mistakes. I think we just got to settle down a little bit. Less than five seconds stand between first and tenth positions on the leaderboard. Arkan Fekin is exactly where he wants to be. And with Enzo Kuhn in ninth, so is Johnny Gemmel. But Gemmel's slender advantage over Kuhn can be short-lived, as his Toyota is still somewhat damaged. A good start also for the Ford of Charles Wilkin, who occupies third. After the break, Swartland Rally action moves to the famous Killarney Racing Circuit for a tarmac showdown in front of thousands of fanatic rally fans. Will Gemmel's roadside repairs last? Will Kuhn stamp his authority on the championship? Or will a third party steal the, the famous Swartland Rally? The penultimate round of the 2010 Sassol South African Rally Championship. Over the years, the Swartland Rally has settled many championships. But with only one short gravel stage under the belt, it's still early days and too early to make any predictions. One thing you can bet your life on is that nothing is a given in the unpredictable sport of rallying. The championship showdown between Enzo Kuhn and Johnny Gemmel is yet to take shape, but it almost didn't happen at all. Very nervous start uh, this morning. We got into the vehicle at, uh, out of the holding area for the start of the rally and it wouldn't start, so our heart stopped there. We had to jump out, push the car. Uh, it seems that the uh, battery ran flat, maybe one of the appliances inside the vehicle was on the heated screen or something, so thankfully it recharged, we are back on speed and we were very nervous through the first stage because of course if you saw the car, it wouldn't restart, but uh, we're feeling better now. Gemmel's trouble started a little later, when he hit a rock near the end of stage one, an event that was followed by a tense few minutes on the side of the road. We got out of that stage, our time was all right, then we got onto the main road, stopped and tried to repair it with a rock. Managed to repair it all right and set the alignment roughly. The country's top rally drivers will have to swap their gravel driving skills for finesse on the tarmac. As stage two, or Bavaria Air One, is a complicated route that takes in most of the black stuff in and around the Killarney racing circuit. The stands are packed for the spectacle that will see a number of cars on the track at the same time. One, go. The roar of the two-litre high-revving engine under the bonnet of the BP Ultimate Polo of Enzo Keen and Guy Hodgson breaks the silence as they fly into stage two. Keen is an experienced driver and used every bit of his experience to record a time of 5 minutes and 33.4 seconds. Yeah, we pushed a bit harder there. They, they changed the stage. Uh, from when we walked it this morning slightly, they put some extra bunting, so that confused us a bit, but we had a good stage. Tarmac is not Ergenfecken's favourite surface, but the defending champion is still put in a valiant effort for a 5 minutes and 37.7 seconds, more than 4 seconds slower than his teammate. Straight on between building on left and arm go. Yeah, it's slippery and, you know, you're on the gravel, then you're on tar, then you're on gravel, so it's, um, it's quite difficult to know exactly where you are. The tarmac was now painted green with no less than three BP Ultimate Polos on the track at the same time. Jan Habich and Douglas Judd manhandled the polo around Kilani, but a time of 5 minutes and 39 seconds was nearly 6 seconds off the winning pace. And 90 right, right left. Zimbabweans Conrad Rotenbach and Peter Marsh had made it very clear that they are no fans of tar. That, together with his lack of previous experience of the Kalani racing circuit, showed, and the talented youngster gave away 13 full seconds. Johnny Gemmel and Drew Starrock were still uncertain if the earlier roadside repairs to the damaged steering arm would last. Thankfully for the Castle Toyota team, it did. But Gemmel lost a further seven seconds to the leaders. So far in 2010, Charles Wilkin and Greg Godrich had very few opportunities to make their mark, but it was all about to change. 
The Basil Reed Bizzub Ford Fiesta driver is a multiple track racing champion. In fact, Wilkin won the last ever nine hour endurance race held at Killarney and it showed as his time of 5 minutes and 33.5 seconds was just one tenth of a second slower than Keane's stage winning time. But more importantly for Wilkin, it was fast enough to take the overall rally lead. And right, 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 and right in there, right, and left onto track. Okay, you're on your own until that left. Hein Latigan is also a former circuit racer. The Burtick Toyota Auris set his sixth fastest time on stage two, enough to maintain his fifth place on the overall leaderboard. JP Damso and Callan Swan are the next ones onto the Kalani track. Damso has a smooth driving style, exactly what you need for fast times on tarmac, and the Total Evolution Runex set the fourth fastest time of all. From ninth on the road, Jaapi van Niekerk and Robin Houten still had their sights set on a decent finish. Stage two has been the pairing's nemesis for most of the season, but this time the C-Track New Africa Development's Toyota Auris survived it without any incident. Evan Hutchison is a multiple off-road racing champion, but the motorite polo driver acquitted himself well on the black stuff to record the eighth fastest time. It was also good enough for eighth on the overall leaderboard. The battle for privateer honours is a close one, with only 0.2 seconds separating the motorite polo from the RCF Johnsway version of Nicholas Ryan and Armand de Toy. At the back of the S2000 field, it was no surprise that newcomer Leroy Polter would use this stage to make his mark at the top level of rallying. Polter already had a moment in stage one, but the new Castrol Toyota factory driver knows a thing or two about tarmac and racing circuits and set the third fastest time of all to rocket him to seventh on the overall leaderboard. Charles Wilkin takes over the top spot of the leaderboard for the first time since moving in behind the seat of his Basil Reed Bizzub Ford Fiesta. But the lead is only 2.1 and 2.4 seconds over Kuhn and Fecken respectively. JP Damso is the first Toyota, while Leroy Poulter climbs up to seventh. Rotenbach and Ryan complete the top ten. It might have only been two stages, but a lot has happened already, and the crews and their cars were in desperate need of a break. Castrol Toyota driver Leroy Poulter had a nervous start to his S2000 career. Yeah, look, I think uh, one to, to not remember. <laughs> the first uh, going down off the first stage, I think we just came up at the first corner faster than what I thought. And, you know, when I got on the brakes, we just lost the rear and, it, you know, the car stalled and got stuck there. With the majority of the Swartland rally still to come, it is too early to get excited. But Charles Wilkin was leading the pack nonetheless. Things are going well at this stage. Uh, it was only a short gravel and short tar, so it's just the beginning. The rally is tomorrow, so uh, we'll see who wants to be first on the road for tomorrow. With only three stages on the cards, day one of the Swatland Rally is a relatively short affair. Stage three takes in a slightly different route of the racetrack when compared to stage two, but with two more significant differences. Night is falling over Cape Town, and with just one minute starting intervals as opposed to the normal two, stage three had all the makings of an epic one, even at only 14 kilometers. The sound of numerous S2000 engines filled the Kalani night sky as fans were treated to some spectacular racing. Castrol Toyota Auris of Johnny Gemmel and Drew Sturrock was back up to speed and Gemmel only had one goal and that was to beat Enzo Keane. In stage three he did, only by four seconds, but kept him within striking distance. Ergen Fekken is a double champion, but is a six-time...